Massive plumes of toxic smoke, two fires in a single day, and a shelter-in-place order lasting weeks. The CSB just released an update on their investigation. When I first covered this incident, we looked at the chaotic events surrounding the Biolab fire. Now the Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board, CSB, has released new details. On September 29, 2024, a chemical reaction sparked fires that destroyed Biolab's Plant 12 warehouse. It started with popping sounds early in the morning. Within hours, flames breached the roof, sending large plumes of smoke visible for miles. Later that day, a second fire erupted, producing multicolored smoke and prompting a broader evacuation. Should smoke even look like that? While the facility was completely lost, thankfully, no injuries were reported. The CSB's investigation revealed some fascinating details about this fire. First, Plant 12 was enormous, 275,000 square feet. The facility stored large quantities of highly reactive oxidizers, including trichloro I really something bad, and sodium dichloro I'm not a hazmat guy, it's, it's right here. The TCCA and DCCA, it was stored in super sacks. These chemicals, when exposed to heat, water, or other contaminants, they can release chlorine gas, hydrogen chloride gas, and even bromine gas. What's interesting is that months before the fire, Biolab actually had established a fire watch due to strong oxidizer odors within the structure. So it seems like they knew something wasn't quite right. On the morning of the incident, fire watch employees heard popping noises while in the break room around 5 a.m. 10 minutes later, by 5.10, they called 911 due to large toxic vapor plumes inside the building. Really not a good sign. The fire breached the roof by 6.30 a.m., and the first shelter-in-place orders were issued by 7.40 a.m. Now, the fire was initially extinguished relatively quickly by 8.10 a.m. Unfortunately, those water-reactive chemicals inside caused major issues, and around noon, a second, much larger fire broke out. The smoke had drifted as far away as Atlanta, about 25 miles. The second fire was extinguished by 4 p.m., but air quality remained a concern for weeks. Nightly shelter-in-place orders continued until October 16th, nearly 17 days after the incident. Also, Interstate I-20, a major route nearby, was closed temporarily, with small roads being closed for weeks. It's no surprise that the CSB, they're now focusing on critical areas like improving storage and handling practices for oxidizers, enhancing fire protection systems for facilities like this, and establishing guidelines for bulk oxidizer emergencies. This incident, it's a strong reminder that local fire departments need to work closely with industry partners. They've got to pre-plan for these types of hazards, these types of events. Knowing the hazards inside your first two buildings, it's essential for ensuring safety, both for the responders, but also the community.